It should come as no surprise to you all that I'm always looking for new and more efficient ways to communicate. Now, I have known about ALE or Automatic Link Establishment for quite some time, but I haven't been willing to move over to Windows in order to try it. Well, now I've decided to go ahead and uh, put a dual boot installation in my machine, Linux Ubuntu and Windows XP Service Pack 3. That means the only obstacle to ALE now was the antenna system. Absolutely, one of the best features of ALE is the band hopping and channel scanning, provided you have the right antenna system to make that happen. The Chameleon Chaw TD, it's a broadband terminated dipole, and that's what we're talking about today. Stick with me, and let's get started. You are listening to the emergency broadcast systems. This station broadcasts emergency news and official information on the air for a sign there. I briefly mentioned band hopping and channel scanning in the introduction, but what ALE is actually doing is scanning 10 HF bands every 8 seconds constantly. The kick in the pants is not knowing when or on what frequency a call or a message will come in on ALE. So we either need an ALE compatible antenna tuner or an antenna which doesn't require any tuning. That's where the broadband terminated dipole comes in. The Chameleon CHATD broadband terminated dipole is a 160 through 6 meter dipole antenna. I'm sure some of you will ask in the comments, but this antenna was sent to me by Chameleon Antenna at no charge and with no expectation of the result of my review. So in the end, the only thing I promised was to give Chameleon Antenna feedback on how this antenna solved the problem of an efficient multiband antenna which required no tuner. I don't have the right camera equipment to show you the CHATD while it's on the tower, so we're going to show it to you while it's here on the table. Then I'll follow up with a few static images of it deployed. The CHATD is a 160 meter through 6 meter broadband terminated dipole. We'll take a look at the SWR plot shortly, but at first glance, between 160 and 10 meters, it appears the antenna requires no tuning. The antenna's power handling is 300 watts SSB or a solid 100 watts on CW or data. The system is delivered in a Molly Day pack. It also includes two 60 foot copper clad Kevlar PTFE antenna wires, two times copper clad Kevlar PTFE counterpoise wires, two times 300 ohm termination resistors, 50 feet of paracord. 4 tent stakes, a 50 foot RG58 coax cable, and of course the transformer. Let's go ahead and look at the SWR now. I already have all of this information up on ohastn.org, but I'll go ahead and put a link right here so you can find it. The red plot is the interesting part, that's your SWR. Looking at it all the way from 1.3 to 30 megahertz can be deceptive, so let's go ahead and break them down. Here's the plot for 160 meters. That gives us a 1.12 at 1.775 megahertz. Now let's move over to 80 meters. And it stays under 2 for the entire 80 meter band. And now we'll move over to 60 meters. Seems it drops us in at uh, 1.64 at 5.12 megahertz. Let's go ahead and take a look at 40 meters now. And 
end, we stay between 1.3 and 1.6 on the entire 40 meter band. Let's go ahead and take a look at 30 meters. We come in at 1.3 at 10.13 megahertz. And now for 20 meters. We have almost a perfect match across the entire 20 meters band. Now I'm going to come back and show you something on 20 meters uh, after we finish the plots. So stay tuned for that. Now let's take a look at 17 meters. I think this is actually the exception because the SWR was higher here than on uh, other bands. I think I'm going to come back to this and try some different configurations later on to see if we can bring down the SWR in 18. Even so, it's still perfectly usable. Let's go ahead and have a look at 15 meters. On 15 meters, we're hovering just below and above 1.5. Let's go ahead and move over to 12 meters. On 12 meters, we're also hovering around 1.5, just above and below. I've got no complaints with that. So let's go ahead and move over to 10 meters. On 10 meters, we start off at about 1.2 and end up at about 1.7. But we have a 1.11 at 28.49 megahertz. Outstanding. And finally, for the bonus band, 6 meters. SWR is a bit higher on 6 meters, but we stay under 2.3 for the entire uh, lower portion of the band. So what do I say about this? I say outstanding. Uh, this antenna opens up huge possibilities for me and the type of operations that I want to do, especially with automatic link establishment. What's really important is results in the real world, and our SWR doesn't actually matter if no one can hear us. So let's take a look at uh, some ALE results that I normally or routinely get. So this is the type of activity map I normally see. I've got excellent European coverage with this antenna system. The nearest ALE station to me is Sierra Mike 3 Fox X-Ray Tango. And I routinely work him on 80, 40, 30, and 20 meters. There are also stations in Italy, Croatia, and the Netherlands, which I routinely hit. In fact, I could almost say it's almost child's play or easy to link up with those European stations. If I could say anything about this antenna, I would have to say it's actually predictable. You also get a very good idea of what the bands are doing when using this antenna because of its consistency. But to date, the biggest surprise I've had with this antenna system on ALE was a link-up with Japan. Joliet Hotel 1 Echo Sierra Bravo linked up with my station on 20 meters. I believe he's a 120 watt station using a whip antenna, and at the moment I'm using a 50 watt amplifier with the FT817. Now, I wouldn't even bother mentioning it if it wasn't for the fact that Joliet Hotel 1 Echo Sierra Bravo is in my herd list almost every day around 12 Zulu. I think that says something about this antenna. Great documentation is kind of a hallmark of chameleon antenna, and this antenna's documentation is no exception. Right now, I'm using the CHATD in a inverted V configuration, with the apex of the system being up at 12 meters. The user manual also has an inverted L configuration. It's got the invis configuration. It's got the half rhombic configuration, as well as the horizontal dipole. 
and very directional sloping configuration. And finally, the sloping V configuration. Now you may not realize it, but I've been testing this antenna for a long time, and I have a lot of supporting information up on www.oh8stn.org. So please do check the links in the description. In the coming weeks and months, we'll follow up this video with a field deployment using the Chameleon CHATD. For those of you interested in ALE, I'll also publish some tutorials and getting started videos to help you get kicked off. And that brings us to the end of the video. If you like what I'm doing, guys, please give me a thumbs up and share this video with someone who you think might enjoy it. For my Patreon and PayPal supporters, thank you very much. It's very much appreciated. Alright guys, rock and roll. Thanks for watching. Ciao.